Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about two NAS drives that you guys may have been considering buying in 2020. These two represent a kind of um, prosumer entry level into what both of these NAS brands have on offer for you. The DS220 Plus from Synology and the TS251D from QNAP. Now both of these brands have pretty much dominated the network attached storage field for the last decade or so. Both of them have brought a lot to the party. They've both brought great hardware and great software. At times, one brand has always brought, produced something that the other one's kind of gone, well, that's not fair, we could have done that, and vice versa. But in this newest generation of network attached storage that's arrived in summer 2020, we have seen these new devices arrive with hardware that is pretty much leveling the playing field. It used to be that Synology was the brand you went to for software and QNAP was the brand you went to for hardware. But both of them have now evolved into a kind of an equal footing with both of them arriving with excellent first party software and excellent hardware readily included. So what we're going to look at today is which one of these two deserves your data. I'm going to try my best not to say which one's better simply because they both have very, very good core strengths. That would appeal to a certain audience but without further ado let's go straight into the first part design now both of them have got their company's own branding and company's own aesthetic design dripping all over them they are very much products of what both of the brands have been releasing for a while both using a familiar chassis that's been slightly tweaked for this new tier so the ds220 plus is using a familiar chassis that we saw first unveiled in the DS218 Plus released almost three years ago. It's arriving with that removable front panel, it's got click and load trays, it's a plastic chassis all the way around, it's got a single um, fan based on the rear that can be set automatic or manual, it's got USB 3 and it's got two LAN ports. The TS251D arrives with a white chassis with a blue um, kind of panel there based onto the front. It's got USB 3 front and back. It's got a single rear mounted fan on the rear, but it only has a single LAN port, which I know a number of you are going to be slightly put out by. Like many of us, we assumed new QNAPs would all start to arrive with 2.5 GBE as standard, but this one I think is very much designed at the tier that doesn't really need that going forward, and that's why we're still looking at two NATs here with one gigabit Ethernet. But with the two 1GBEs on that Synology, it might turn some heads, but we'll get onto that in the hardware section later. In terms of aesthetic design, they're very, very different beasts. With the QNAP, sorry, the QNAP here arriving with that white chassis curved edges, far more uh, compact of the two, and it's got a removable front panel, but a far more discreet side-loaded fashion. The Synology, on the other hand, has got that quite edgy design. When the its predecessor was first unveiled and it had that chassis, I kind of compared it against um, that remake of Robocop they made a few years ago, which was all hard, black edges and grr, kind of uh, almost military-grade design, which is something we're still seeing in the DS220 Plus here. So I know a lot of you, and quite weirdly, I think a lot of Mac users might be quite drawn to that QNAP design because it's got the kind of white and metallic edge going for it there. It's all curved edges, and it's the probably the smaller chassis of the two. It's a little deeper but it's definitely the smaller in the other two dimensions. Now, uh, in terms of when we talk about aesthetic design between them, we can also talk about kind of what the software brings in terms of aesthetic design as well. And we will talk about that later on. But in terms of their own appeal and visual appeal on a software level, their swinting switch the other way. Synology and its applications have always been quite appealing to Mac users because the user interface is quite heavily kind of stylized on ios it's got kind of everything's very discreet and hidden away all the hard decisions are hidden back everything's designed to be as fresh and colorful as possible and all the kind of techie stuff is hidden a couple of layers deep you have to dig same goes with like going into even the control panel you have to dig quite a few layers deep to get to techie details with everything being on a nice veneer on the front of simplicity with the qnap on the other hand Although there is still a user-friendly interface, the graphical user interface of QTS on QNAP is still very, very good. It's a little bit more techy, and the information isn't quite as so many layers deep, which I know will appeal to some and intimidate others. And that attitude towards software design 
is something that's prevalent across not only the browser software, the graphical user interface there, but all of the client applications for desktop PCs, Macs, and iOS and Android mobile devices. And I think in terms of design, they both know their marketplace, with although um, both brands being purchased by Windows, Mac, and Android users, I think Mac users will vibe better with the design of Synology, and Android and Windows users will definitely vibe with the QNAP. Um, onto hardware though, we are seeing some distinctions there. Not a lot, but definitely you can see the thumbprints of both brands. The Synology arrives with probably the superior CPU of the two. It arrives with an Intel Celeron J4025. So it's a newer generation Celeron processor. It's a dual core 2.0 uh, base, uh, 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz. So really, real close to that 3 gigahertz limit there with clock upgrades. Um, and again, that's a 2 core processor. It also arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 memory, so that's 2,400 megahertz memory. Uh, great upgrade over the DDR3 and the predecessor. And as mentioned, it's got USB 3 on board and a couple of LAN ports on the rear. It's also one of the only units in the newer generation of Synology that have been unveiled that does not feature NVMe SSD cache. So if that's a buying point for you, the 220 plus will be off the table because it's the only one that doesn't have that functionality and feature. It also doesn't have the SATA port that its predecessor had, but it does have two LAN, which I think on balance is the better of the two. Now, the QNAP on the other hand, its CPU is still very, very proficient and very close. It is the J4005. Now, th uh, that processor, again, dual core, is a 2.0 uh, gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz. So again, quite close, but not quite as high. And it also arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 memory. But the Synology can only be upgraded to 6 gig, weirdly, and the QNAP can be upgraded to 8 gig officially. Now we are, of course, going to experiment with larger memory capacities when these devices are together in the studio. We have already upgraded the 251D unofficially to 16 gig of memory, and it did function, and, mem and programs did see it. But I know a number of you know there's CPU limits and stuff like that that have to be bared into consideration on these things sometimes. But that 6 gig on the Synology, a 2 gig stick and a 4 gig stick, is something that's always confused me. I'm not going to bang on about it in this video too much, but what I will say is it's, it's weird, a bit weird. Now, the QNAP, along with that CPU and that memory, it also arrives with a bunch of other hardware options that aren't available on the Synology. It arrives with an HDMI 2.0 port, so you've got 60 frames per second 4K locally accessible and with support of a keyboard and mouse, as well as its own software in a portal form that's a completely separate user interface, graphical user interface, via HDMI that can be viewed via a smart TV, which you can utilize for things like Plex, utilize it for Chrome, for YouTube, and a bunch of other Office applications, as well as the surveillance software that is available from both of these devices. Now, on top of that, you have got um, a PCIe slot, the PCIe Gen 2 times 4 slot, allowing you to add NVMe SSD cache or SATA SSD cache, as well as 10 GBE or increased ports, uh, your network interface ports. So you can add some 2.5 GBE, some 5 GBE, and of course, 10 GBE as well. That's not included as standard, and that is an upgrade card. There's even combo cards that arrive with both SSD and improved network interface ports on a single card that can be installed inside. The QNAP even allows you to use the SSDs for caching of the hard drive array or utilizing it as raw storage, which again, a number of you will probably take advantage of, particularly photo and video editors, something not present on the 220 Plus. And again, that's because both of these brands have always had a very certain attitude towards the way their users should interact with their data. Synology has always believed that users should be using the network or the internet, with QNAP thinking that yes, we'll support network and the internet, but also local, something Synology have not really entertained because they don't see that being as pressing a demand as network and internet access. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you tell me, because it all depends on the user. That's what this video is about. Now, moving forward from that hardware, we can talk about a little bit more detail about that CPU inside both of them. In terms of uh, CPU benchmark, 
the Synology CPU there has got a higher benchmark overall. Both of them support 4K transcoding as well as 1080p transcoding. Both can be utilized as a Plex Media server that we'll talk about later on. And both of them arrive with support of virtualization and surveillance on that with that CPU. So lots going on there. They both arrive with um, AES and I level encryption. So again, it, um, the encryption, if you're using encrypted data, you will get higher performance than a standard now is using AES 256 bit with the NI being a better algorithm utilization to make things get done that little bit quicker thanks to it using lesser CPU resources. And ultimately in terms of the internal hardware and indeed those external ports, for me, I like the QNAP because I like having those different means and ways to access my data. I like having different ways, having a NAS connected to the TV for near zero latency of enjoying my multimedia, but also networking internet access by having it connected to a router. And that PCIe upgrade slot for me gives it the edge. But there's no denying CPU and memory combination in the Synology and the way DSM takes advantage of it with its intelligent caching cannot be ignored. And if you're not going to take advantage of all the things on that QNAP, the Synology is probably the one for you. Now, in terms of software, that's where it really is going to be difficult between these two because they both have got fantastic first-party apps, fantastic third-party app support, and loads of client applications for your mobile and desktop devices currently available. Now, rather than go through the entire myriad of applications, let's pick on some of those highlights. In terms of backups, with both of them arriving with Hyper Backup and Active Backup Suite, um, on the Synology and hyper, um, Hybrid Backup Sync 3 on the QNAP. I would say that Active Backup Suite is definitely an enterprise level program that will run on this device. And of course, you've got support of BTRFS as well and their own um, software RAID built into that Synology. You've got quite a lot going on. But the QNAP and its Hybrid um, Backup Sync 3 software is definitely the more approachable of the two. It's definitely the one for me that is the most user-friendly and the most multifaceted. It doesn't have some of the pinning options of Active Backup um, Suite, um, uh, Active Backup Suite, and the Synology Hybrid Backup software is still very, very good indeed. But in terms of the backup software and the different devices that are being supported at any given time and the commands and instructions and the configuration, the backup software and the QNAP is the better for me. When it comes to multimedia, I've got to give the edge to the Synology because although both of them have got their own uh, dedicated video application as well as support of Plex and their own photo and music applications and photo recognition applications with Synology Moments and Photo Station here and Photo Station and QMaggie from the QNAP, in terms of multimedia support, the Synology has the edge for me because it has increased first party support on things like Amazon Fire Stick, Amazon Alexa, and more. They have dedicated first party applications that you can go to the Amazon Fire Stick App Center and download Synology music, uh, photo, and video applications directly onto the Fire Stick for a first party attunement and utilizing those apps, which is a big, big deal. If you're on the local network, there are several applications, once again, for um, Alexa. You can get a skill called My Media, which I heartily recommend or you can utilize um, third-party applications for looking over the local network for DLNA servers, which is something you can do on your local network, but to use a Fire Stick to access remote media, so that's over the internet on someone else's server, your choices are either utilizing Plex Media Server, MB, stuff like that, but Synology bring an extra tier to the table utilizing their own software and allowing you to download DS video for Alexa and D, sorry, DS or um, the audio station application for Alexa and DS video, DS audio and photo station on Fire Stick, which means you're using less layers to access all of your movies and music and more, which means rather than using third party apps, which will always perform slightly worse than first party applications due to them sometimes not having transcoding support or other layers of an app, whether on OS, whether on Linux, etc., etc. The Synology just wins for me, thanks to the investment in that um, multimedia application form on those popular platforms. Now, in surveillance, this is a tricky one, because I'd say it's a tie. Because the Synology 
is the better software overall for me. I do think Surveillance Station from Synology, currently 8.2, is more fluid. It actually allows you to access cameras on the web browser, something you can't do on QVR Pro. Currently, you have to use uh, the client app from QNAP. And it's probably, for me, the more user-friendly application of the two. Um, if you are comparing the 220 and the 21D, if you're looking for the most user-friendly and easy software, the Synology is just that pinch smoother and that pinch more intuitive overall. But you only get two camera licenses on this 220 Plus. So you, after that, you have to spend about 30 quid per camera license to add more than two cameras. And although you can use old mobile phones and turn them into cameras, they still use up a license. So it's a great bit of software, but you've got to pay through the nose if you're going to use more than, more ca more than two cameras like these ones here. But on the QNAP platform, although it's just that pinch less intuitive and that pinch less smooth in the web browser, it is fantastic in the client apps. It arrives with eight camera licenses for QVR Pro, a huge leap forward, and it is still a great piece of surveillance software with all of the um, area control, pan tilt zoom control, um, intelligent recording uh, check-in, having the ability to go through your recordings and still record on all of these cameras very very intuitively and if you are going to be utilizing um, access via a dedicated surveillance station the QNAP still wins as well because you can connect a monitor a keyboard and a mouse and then monitor your entire control deck locally using the QVR application for HDMI as well as a now still being network and internet accessible with all of those apps with QTS so again it's a draw because I think you can do more with the QNAP surveillance platform, but the Synology surveillance platform is just a dream to use. It's so smooth and they really focused on that. Which brings us to Plex Media Server. Plex Media Server is by far one of the most popular applications for people buying and now specifically for it. Plex Media Server allows you to have the graphical user interface currently available from things like Amazon um, Prime TV and Netflix and Hulu and HBO Online and all that stuff, but using your movies. So if you've got decades of box sets and movies and stuff that you've bought and downloaded and stuff, and stuff online, you can watch it on your NAS, but utilising all those lovely splash screens and thumbnails and links and uh, reviews from you know uh, Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb and stuff like that, all of that. Plex allows you to use your own media and have that lovely graphical user interface without using a third-party streaming platform. There is a subscription built into the background, and this video is not about selling Plex, but it is nice to see that you can have all of those lovely bespoke options on your own local media, and both of these NASs do run Plex Media Server. However, that CPU, as proficient as it is, you can take 4K off the table. Even if you remove transcoding, which is when a file is changed, so it's more befitting of the client device you're utilizing, that CPU on these NASs is really going to struggle playing back 4K. It's definitely not going to transcode 4K in Plex, but playing back 4K media in Plex, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. It's going to really push the resources of these NASs. 1080p and lower end, 1080p transcoding is definitely possible on both of these, and I would say that you are going to get near identical Plex Media Server support of your multimedia on either one of these two NASs, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. However, with regards to how you enjoy your media and watching 4K, if you aren't going to be taking advantage of Plex Media Server, there are more ways to watch your media on the 251D. Thanks to Multimedia Console and its far more intelligent indexing system in the background that is configurable as well as set to a much preferred automatic mode, it will allow you to enjoy media on a multitude of different devices, streaming locally and via the internet, in a way that I think you will get better output overall. Synology still have that trump card. Oh, that man's ruined that word, hasn't he? Um, it's still got that great selling point of having applications for both um, the Alexa platform and Fire Stick and more, as well as both of them supporting, you know, Google Home and using I if this then that or IFTT. Uh, but if you are going to utilize it for Plex, either one of these will definitely do the job. But what I will say is, if you are going to enjoy your medium natively and you want to transcode, although the CPU on the QNAP is lesser as far as the CPU benchmark goes, 
I think there are more ways to watch that media on the QNAP than there is on the Synology. So kind of think about how you're going to interact with your media before you decide which one you should go for, because that will make all the difference. And ultimately, that's it. These two NASes know what they can and cannot do. They both, as good as they are, they aren't treading on the toes of the next tier up, namely the DS720 Plus and the TS253D. They are designed for someone that wants to enter the world of network attack storage, but either doesn't want to break the bank or knows their limitations. They are one to five um, active users at any given time, and with support of up to hundreds, you know, hundreds and hundreds of users on the device, although not simultaneously, they both bring a lot to the table. So, in summary, if you are a Mac user who wants simplicity in the way you interact with your data, if you want to be able to stream your uh, movies, stream your TV shows with no fuss in the most straightforward way currently in 2020, the DS220 Plus is the one for you. If you want a more multifaceted backup strategy, if you want to, if you're a photo video editor that wants to interact with your data at a faster speed and have the ability to run different media types on different media platforms, the QNAP is the one for you because although both of them are very similar in hardware, they both have their own end user in mind. And do bear in mind, once again, about the, I mentioned earlier on, I touched on, I didn't really elaborate much about file systems because both of them support a multi-year backup strategy. They both got support of RAID 0, RAID 1, and JBOD. But the Synology arrives with support of BTRFS, which although some users aren't a huge fan of it and prefer EXT4 on the QNAP, does allow much, much faster shared folder um, duplication as well as much faster background snapshots, which is when you have a hierarchy of snapshots of a piece of data that you can revert to when needed. It will take up space, but BTRS does bring that to the table. And along with Synology's own hybrid RAID platform, SHR, that allows you to mix and match drives. That's not really something you can think about on this platform. How does the QNAP counter? It can be expanded way, way more. It can support several of their new expansion series, the TR002, TR004, the tr 104C, the TR106C, they have loads of different expansions that cater to different end users, all of which are supported on this device. So again, how you intend to interact with your data now, and maybe how you intend to interact with it a few years down the line, may factor into your decision. But this has been the 220 Plus versus the 251D. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, click a like, throw me a bone here, or click subscribe to learn more about these comparisons in the, in the description below. Uh, you've got more information about this comparison on NASCompares.com. And if you are interested in buying a NAS, do visit the guys at Span.com. Over 25 years in the biz, they know what they're doing. They're the NAS experts, worldwide delivery. What's not, not to love? Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.